Hey, what's going on? I'm Allie. In this tutorial, we're going to work with a layered Photoshop logo in both Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Let's hop into Premiere and get started. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro. We have this mountain time lapse clip here, and we're going to be placing a client logo over top of it. I'll hop over to Photoshop, and here we have our multi layered logo. We have the sun here, the mountain, the client's name, and their slogan. Four different layers. Let's hop back into Premiere Pro and import this logo. I'll go up to my project panel and selecting import. I'll select the logo PSD file, open. Okay, and here we have a few different importing options for this logo. We could import it as merge all layers, so that would merge all four layers. Click the drop down menu. We also have the option for merged layers, individual layers, and a sequence. So let's look at what each of these does. If we were to choose merge all layers, press OK, drag this logo down onto the V2 track here. And side note, this logo is currently too big and the dark blue of the logo interferes with the dark mountain that sits behind it. We're gonna fix that coming up. Okay, and we have this one layer that contains this entire logo with the client name and slogan. So that option certainly works fine. I prefer a different option I'm gonna show you in just a second. I'll just command Z on my keyboard to undo importing that logo. We'll just import the logo again. So I wanna show you what import as merged layers does here. So this gives you the option to check mark or uncheck any of the individual layers. So let's say we don't wanna include the slogan, we will uncheck that and press okay. Drag that logo onto the timeline. This gives us the logo with the client name and no slogan all on one layer. Having all of the elements of your logo in one layer reduces the clutter. But most of the time I do prefer, we'll just import the logo again import as individual layers. So again here, we could deselect any of these individual layers if we wanted to. I want them all selected, press OK. And here we have a bin that contains each one of these layers here. We'll just select them all and drag them onto our timeline. And as you can see, they definitely need to be stacked on top of each other. So I'll just zoom into the timeline here. I'll drag each of these layers on top of each other and extend the duration of them. Okay, so the reason that I like each of these to be on its own layer is because this allows me to manipulate each layer on its own. And I know the size is a little big right now. We're gonna deal with that coming up. First, just drag the timeline up a little bit here. Okay, so let's say that I want the sunshine layer to have a cross dissolve on it. Making sure that my cursor is at the beginning of this layer, I will select it and press Command D on my keyboard or Control D if you're on a Windows. And there we go, we have a cross dissolve. I'm gonna select the cross dissolve on the end there and delete it because I only want it starting at the beginning. And side note, just so you know, the reason that my cross dissolve didn't affect every single one of these layers is because I don't have the V2, V3, V4, and V5 track selected. If I did and I added a cross dissolve, it would affect every single one of those layers. I'll just undo that and deselect those tracks. Okay, scrub through there. Cool. Okay, so I like the sum part of that logo dissolving in like that. Next, I'll select the client name logo and on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the right arrow 10 times go over to effect controls and under motion where it says position, click on the toggle animation to add a keyframe. I'll bring my playhead to the beginning of that layer. Just move this over a bit and drag the X axis position all the way to the left. I've got mine now at like minus 696 so that we can't see it anymore. And this has created a second position. You can see the keyframe you can sort of see the keyframe right there. So if you haven't worked with keyframes before, we have the first position set where we dragged our client name off screen and we have the second position here where it originally was. So I'm gonna click the space bar to play this through and the client name swipes in there. I'm liking the look of that. I'll select the client name again, go up to these keyframes, select them both, right click, Choose Temporal Interpolation and select Ease In. Play that through and Ease In does what it says it does. It makes the position of the company name moving in, Ease In a little smoother. Next, I will select the slogan. Again, go over 10 frames, go up to position, click the toggle, go to the beginning of that layer. 
And instead of starting the slogan off from the left side, I'm gonna actually do the opposite. So we'll drag the position all the way to the right so we can no longer see it. Select both of those keyframes, right click, again, choose temporal interpolation and ease in. Okay, and let's check this out. Sweet, I'm pretty happy with that. And I want this logo to be the length of the clip, so I'll just select all of those layers and increase the duration of them. Cool, okay, so once you're happy with the way that each of the layers of the logo shows up on screen, what I like to then do is nest my logo because I'm not a big fan of clutter when I'm editing and nesting allows you to easily access any of these individual layers of your logo if you need to. So let's select all of those logo layers, right click and choose nest, call it logo, okay. There we go, now all of those individual layers are within that one nested layer. If we wanted to access any of those individual layers, we could double click on the nest and there you go, we got them all right there. We'll go back to the other sequence, okay. Next, making sure that our nested logo is selected on our timeline, let's go up to effect controls and let's adjust the scale to 55. I'm liking the way that looks. I want the position of this logo to be a little bit higher up. So we will adjust the position's Y axis just a little bit there. And I have my cursor sort of in the middle of this logo. So I'm gonna press the toggle animation button, side scale, bring my cursor to the beginning of the logo and bring the scale to around 50. Let's play this out. Okay, so now the logo scales in nicely. Now we could be done here, but I wanna show you something that's super cool and is super easy to do because all of the Adobe apps are dynamically linked. So Premiere Pro and Photoshop work really well together. So let's say that your client wants to see their logo in white. Let's double click on our logo nest. I'll right click on the Hike Like You Mean It layer, choose edit in Adobe Photoshop. That brings us over to our logo with all four layers in it. And I'm gonna quickly select each of these elements and make them white. So I'll grab my text icon to select the hike like you mean it text. Click on this double arrow sort of icon here where these colors are to flip them so that white is in front. And that makes our first layer white. Do the same thing to the second layer and the other two layers aren't text layers. So I'll grab my selection tool up here, select them, grab my paint bucket tool and select each of them to make this entire logo white. Now I'm gonna press Command S on my keyboard. If you're with Windows, press Control S to save what you've done. Hop back over to Premiere and look at that. That's how easy it is to make changes or adjustments to your Photoshop file and have those changes be applied back in Premiere Pro. We'll go back over to the clip with the logo and check this out. Awesome, okay, and lastly, I'm gonna show you what the last option does. So again, I'll right click in the project panel and import the logo where it says import as, click the drop down menu, choose sequence. And again, we could deselect any of the layers if we wanted to, I don't want to, so press okay. Great, and this option has made a bin for us and it has each of the individual layers in it as well as a sequence. Let's double click on the sequence here. So the sequence option is great as well because it creates a sequence with each of the layers already stacked so you don't have to manually do it the way we did before. And if you're gonna choose the sequence option, what you can do is just select all of those layers, press Command C or Control C on your keyboard to copy them, go over to your clip, just move that over, deselect the V1 track, select the V2 track so that the first of the layers shows up in the V2 track and above, press Command V or Control V on your keyboard to paste. Okay, and we could drag these out again. And there you go. That's how you can easily work with a Photoshop multi-layered logo in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're into filmmaking and gear reviews, subscribe to our channel because we release weekly videos about both. Thanks again and we'll see you in another video.